We're going to cover propositional conjunction and predicational conjunction in this video. So there is a difference between the two types. They may use the same types of words, but they're going to behave differently semantically. So propositional conjunction takes two sentences and combines them to create a new sentence. Karen is mad and Tom is happy. So you could think of it as proposition and proposition, like P and Q. But in the case of predicational conjunction, we're not getting a truth value here. What we're doing is we're getting some other argument, some predicate, mad and sad. So this is like saying in the end, it's going to be MX and SX for X is mad and X is sad. So we can see a bit of a difference there. And this is going to be important because when we think about conjunction, what does it do? Uh, if you think about a classic form of conjunction, you might think of something like this. You take uh, two phrases of the same type, you can join them with and, and you get an, the same phrase out. And it's going to behave pretty similarly. We're going to change the syntax up a little bit. What we're going to do instead is we're going to have a conjunction phrase with a conjunction bar and a conjunction hosting and, and then our XPs are going to be on the sides. And that's just so we can do it one at a time with binary composition. But this is important because if we think about the values, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to take a T, we're going to take a T together, and we're going to get a T as an output. So when we think about the type of the propositional conjunction, it's basically going to be a T, T, T. So you take a truth value, you get out a truth value, and then another truth value out of it. So in the case of predicational conjunction, we're going to get something different, but it's going to follow a same pattern. It's going to be ET, ET, ET because we're taking three things. We're taking an ET and an ET, and we're pumping out an ET. So our, our conjunctions are going to take these forms of essentially X comma XX. So let's see how we can do this with Karen is mad and Tom is happy. The first thing I want to do is lay out the Lambda translations for the two sentences. So Karen is mad is true if and only if K is mad and Tom is happy is going to be true if and only if he is happy. So let's just start with that. Now for and, we're taking a truth value. So in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to take a sentence. We're going to combine it with another sentence, and then we're going to get a sentence, a truth value out of it. So it's a T to T to T. So what this is going to look like, is it's going to look like lambda P, sorry, we're going to do it in reverse order, lambda Q dot lambda P dot P and Q. Okay, so this might look a little bit different, but what we're doing essentially is when we encounter a sentence of type T, we're going to insert it in. And in order for this whole thing to be true, both of our conjuncts have to be true. So P has to be true and Q has to be true. So let's push this up the tree and see how we can apply this. So at the conjunction bar level, do lambda Q, lambda P, P and Q, so that's the function. And now we're going to apply uh, one if and only if T is happy. So we're not going to include the one if and only if bit. We're just going to include the T is happy. So that's going to be our first proposition applied. So now this is going to replace the Q portion. So we're going to be left with lambda P dot P and T is happy. Okay. So when we get up to our conjunction phrase at the next bit, what we're going to be just doing is applying now our leftmost sentence to it. So we're going to be applying that to P. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this down a little bit to give us space. And then at the top, so this is going to look like lambda Q as the function. Uh, sorry. Lambda P is what we have left. Lambda P dot P and T is happy. Okay, and then we're going to apply one if and only if K is mad to it. So that's going to replace our P in our proposition. So this is going to be true if and only if, and then we're going to have K is mad as one condition. We're going to change our and logical operator into words, and then T is happy. So this is going to give you the truth conditions for sentences with the propositional conjunction. Now, if you're thinking about how do you do a word like or, it's very similar, lambda Q, lambda P, P or Q. This is just like when we saw the negation earlier. It's the same thing as lambda P, 
uh, dot lambda x dot not px, or similarly, just lambda p dot not p. So you can kind of see how we can do our operators there, and it's no different. So what's going to happen when we have something like mad and sad? So let's think about our types here. Uh, and also let's think about what we're going to have in terms of our lambda translation. So uh, sad is going to be lambda x dot x is sad, and mad is going to equal lambda x dot x is mad. Now, what do we say for and? Well, I said what we're going to have to get is something like px and qx because this is going to be type et, 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 and that's because these um, adjective phrases are also type et as we saw before. So when we combine these, we're going to get an et, et at the conjunction, and then in the conjunction phrase, we're going to get an et out of it, and we should get something like x is mad and x is sad. So what we're going to do for and is we're going to label it as such. It is going to be lambda q dot lambda p. Everything is the same as before, but now we have a binder in. We have our lambda x. That is going to be our identity. And this is just going to be px and ux. So as we go up the tree, here's how we're going to apply this. We're going to have lambda p, uh, q. This is going to be our function dot lambda p dot lambda x. And this is going to be px and qx. So here's what we're going to do. We're now going to apply the function lambda x dot x is sad to it. So what's going to happen is every case where we have q, we're going to do that replacement. So this is now going to be lambda p dot lambda x dot px. And now here's where we're going to replace our q with lambda x dot x is sad. And just to make sure that everything is being bound with that and by the same subject, we then apply x to it. And what's going to happen in the end is nothing really changes. We're just going to get lambda p, lambda x dot px, and lambda x dot x is sad. So in terms of our next um, bit of information. Of course, the lambda x is going to go away at that bit because we have uh, put that in at that pit. So we shouldn't have actually had lambda x there. It's just x is sad because we've applied x to it. So what do I mean by that? Just to explicitly show this lambda x is being applied with this x. So that lambda x goes away. So now if we continue up our tree, it's just going to be the same thing. But now we're going to be applying to lambda p. So I won't show the full derivation here, but I will show where that replacement is happening. So we're going to be doing a replacement in lambda p, so the lambda p goes away. The lambda x is going to get replaced with x is mad, so lambda x dot x is mad, and that's replacing p. We're then going to apply x to it, so that's just going to become x is mad, and then we're left with everything else that remains, and x is sad. So when we do some more applications on this, now we're going to get lambda x dot x is mad after we do x with lambda x dot x is mad and x is sad. So now as we continue to move up the tree and we're going to get like Trevor is mad and sad or Karen is mad and sad, it's going to be true if and only if Karen is mad and Karen is sad because that subject is going to get input right into our subject position x is here. So those are the two different types of conjunction. It's important to know that these words are different fundamentally. The and that is predicational is completely different than the and that is propositional. They have different types, they have different behaviors, different requirements in the sentence, and they perform different things. In terms of speech, I mean, they're going to behave very similarly, but in terms of semantics, do not get them confused because things will not work out properly if you do.